In this video, I'm going to show you how to solve the Schrodinger equation for the quantum rigid rotor. This problem is of particular interest not just because it's one of the most physically useful solutions to the Schrodinger equation, but also because it's a really clever and beautiful use of spherical harmonics. If you're interested in knowing more, watch on. A rigid rotor is a device that consists of two masses held at a constant distance r from each other that rotates about its center of mass. Its Schrodinger equation solution is often used to predict the rotational energy levels of diatomic molecules because the distance between atoms in a diatomic molecule is often roughly constant. Also, this Schrodinger equation problem is exactly solvable. For these reasons, I decided it needed a video on my YouTube channel. This is that video. In in the Hamiltonian, we must use the reduced mass because while the masses are coupled such that the problem is mathematically like a one-body problem, the mass is still distributed like a two-body problem. Remember that the reduced mass is given by this formula. Also, there is no potential in the problem. The rigid rotor is rotating freely about its center of mass. Specifically, it rotates about either of its two axes with the largest moment of inertia. This is the moment of inertia for a rigid rotor rotating about its center of mass. No potential means that the Hamiltonian Hamiltonian operator consists of nothing but the kinetic energy part, therefore we have this as our Hamiltonian, where I've rewritten it in terms of the moment of inertia. Because the distance between the masses, this r quantity, is fixed and the rigid rotor doesn't move translationally, one can take the position state of the quantum rigid rotor to be the angular, we will use spherical coordinates, location of the rigid rotor masses relative to each other, where the fixed radial coordinate is their separation distance. Now I'm telling you we're going to use spherical coordinates to tell you exactly what convention for the angular location we're going to be using. Therefore, we need the Laplacian and spherical coordinates of a function that is independent of the radial coordinate evaluated at that radial coordinate equals the separation distance of the rigid rotor. The complete ordinary Laplacian of a scalar in 3D Euclidean flat space written in spherical coordinates is given by this formula. Now, taking the scalar function to be independent of the radial coordinate and evaluating it at r equals the separation Separation distance gives the Laplacian we're looking for, which is this one. Plugging this into the Hamiltonian operator gives us this result for the Hamiltonian. Therefore, Schrodinger's equation is this, where next I moved these constants over to that side in order to make the next step easier. The goal of solving the time-independent Schrodinger equation like this specifically consists of finding a complete set of orthonormal eigenfunctions, here the position representation of the orthonormal eigenstates, and all of the associated eigenvalues. The goal of solving the Schrodinger equation for this system as I just described is very easy if you're familiar with spherical harmonics. We can rewrite this constant that shows up here in the equation in terms of another constant called L, like this, where L is whatever it needs to be to cause the expression on the right to equal the value on the left. The Schrodinger equation then becomes this. The Schrodinger equation is now in a form that is very familiar to us. This is exactly the equation that is satisfied by the spherical harmonics. I've written out the spherical harmonics right here. If you're not familiar, these are the associated Legendre polynomials of cosine theta. The formulas are readily available. You can look them up. And also you can see them in other videos of mine. One usually first encounters these spherical harmonics when computing the orbital angular momentum eigenfunctions. In the description, there's a link to a video where I show how to do that. And in fact, that's one of the videos where where I give the formulas for these associated Legendre polynomials. More specifically, the normalized spherical harmonics represent the complete set of orthonormal, smooth, and continuous solutions to this equation. If you remember back to whenever you learned about spherical harmonics, you will recall that they are defined only for integer l and integer m, and only include associated Legendre functions of the first kind and not the second kind, which include singularities. These facts are a consequence of the continuity and smoothness requirements. Specifically, we have that the wave function is just equal to the normalized spherical harmonics. So in short, because the spherical harmonics are the complete set of orthonormal solutions to this equation here, and therefore the Schrodinger equation for the quantum rigid rotor, they're literally just our wave function. The fact that L must be such an integer quantizes the energy. Specifically, we have this relation. This can then be solved for the energy to give us the quantized energy levels. We therefore have our complete set of normalized energy eigenfunctions and energy eigenvalues. We have completely solved our problem. So now you know how to set up and solve the Schrodinger equation for the quantum rigid rotor. It actually isn't that hard because most of the work's already done whenever you solve the angular momentum eigenvalue relations 
for the spherical harmonics. We can just apply that result to this to get the beautiful and highly useful solution very quickly. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Dietrich out.